What's going on guys? My name is Matt Pinello with Matt Bangs Wood. You are currently sitting in my office with me. Now this is not where we do business. This is simply my home office where all of Matt Bangs Wood content gets created. Have a set of plans with me here. It has been number one on requested content for months now. How to read plans. By far it's one of the most complicated things when it comes to building. A lot of carpenters don't understand exactly what they're looking at. Now today I'm going to sit down with you guys and explain a couple different things that will really help you guys understand what you're looking at when you have a set of plans like this. Now since this is my personal office and not the office we do business at, I don't have a plan table. We're going to roll with it. I'm going to show you guys a couple things, let you guys know the difference between architectural and structural, go over a couple different things for both. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you took something away from it. Now before we go any farther, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Pinella. I'm a carpenter from Central California. My father is a general contractor in the area and we have been building for years now. I dropped out of high school at a young age to start framing and it has become much more than a career for me. I spend my extra time helping you guys out by making instructional content, documenting builds, and showing you guys the ways of building. If you guys are new here, hit that big red subscribe button down below and turn on post notifications. Keep up with everything we got going. This video has absolutely nothing to do with electrical, nothing to do with plumbing, concrete, any of that. We're talking framing here. That's all we're going to talk about start to finish. Let's dive right in though. So typically when you have a set of plans, you have a cover sheet, which will have a 3D rendering of the home along with a bunch of info about where it's located, what's going on, complete scope of work. Since we're only doing the framing on this project, the only thing we print out is our structural, architectural, and elevations. Those three things right there allow us to frame from concrete up. So we are on A1.0. This is our site plan. This is going to give us a basic rundown of what's going on on the property. Now think of plans as a puzzle. Everything here has a place. Architectural site plan legend is up here in the corner and it tells you what each individual mark means. You have keynotes here with numbers and circles that go to one spot or another. For instance, number 18 is a new deck and that's going to be right out there. Up here at the site plan legend you can see new addition to existing residents. That shade right there, obviously it's right out there. It's going to tell you a couple other things. We have E electrical line that runs along the back side there. I'm actually kind of worried about that. It seems like it might be in our way. In the case that it is, we're going to have to have that disconnected. Now one thing you can check out here on the site plan, you have a water line, a gas line, a sewer line, and an electrical line here. You can find your gas line there, electrical lines right out there, water lines run all over the place. These are things you can look out for before you're either digging or doing other work. Now since we're framing this project, the only thing we really have to look out for is that electrical line right there. We don't have equipment on this project since the lot right there. It's pretty narrow. We actually can't get a lift anywhere on site. We have a home here, home here, street runs along here. Now another thing the site plan does is tells you exactly where the lot is and how big it is. As you can see, we got a little pie shape going on here. There's nowhere to get equipment in. We have an existing garage here, existing home is here, addition goes here, and there is nowhere to get a lift in. Now our game plan here, we're going to have all of our material dropped right here in the driveway. Our laborers are going to pack it back to the addition. That goes for all of our plate, all of our studs, our floor system, roof system, everything. These guys are going to put in work. Now on your site plan here as well, you'll find little circles with numbers inside of them to reference on your keynotes here. Number one, for instance, which is right in here. Residents to be renovated. Number two, residents to remain not in the scope. So nothing is changing with this side of the home, but this side here is affected. Number three, Main house addition with new 610 square foot ADU unit above. Now this here is going to have a list of things for not only the framers, but every trade. Now with the site plan here, they're basically giving you guys a rundown on what's going on. All these keynotes here that you can reference have anything to do from the fruit trees that are being removed to put in the new sidewalk to what's going on with the addition. Now we're going to go ahead and flip pages here and start looking at the stuff that actually has to do with framing. Now we're not going to look at any of this here. The only thing we want to look at today is our floor plan that we're going to be building. So we are now on Architectural 2.1. 2.0 was actually a demolition floor plan. We don't need that because we're not doing demo. One thing to keep in mind when you first start reading plans that helped me out tremendously is understanding the difference between an architect and a structural engineer. Architects make things pretty and engineers make things work. Here we have the floor plan for the addition that we're going to be framing. Architects draw in things like the toilet here, the bathtub here, 
two sinks, and a hallway closet. Engineers not going to give you any of that info and not going to show anything. They're simply going to show what they want to make the building up to code. While the architect here is going to explain exactly where all these windows are going to go. Now the first thing we're going to do when we get on the site here is snap this wall along here. Five and a half over, snap another line there. That's going to be for that wall. Now from there, you can see here 31 foot four hooking building over to there. Now what that's going to do by pulling 31 foot 4 from corner to corner on both sides is going to make sure that we are perfectly parallel. We don't suggest following concrete because concrete isn't always perfect. In the case that this is 31 foot 4 and this may be 31 foot 5, you're out an inch already. You don't want to build like that. So now before you lay out studs in this wall, you should make note of where your windows are and lay those out first. Now as you can see here, we have 2 foot 8 hooking outside of plate to center of that window. Now you have 105 written there and a little diamond. That is going to be used for reference on your window and door schedule, which we'll get to in just a second. So now that you've laid out that window there, we're going to lay out the one right next to it. Typically they would have another number in between and you would just mark center, but this one, as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five numbers to your center. This is where our construction calculator comes in handy. We have five foot nine. Five foot five. Four foot 11. Two foot four, and three foot eight. 22 foot one. So 22 foot one hooking outside to center of your window. From there you can find out what size 104 is and pull accordingly and lay out that window. Now it's going to be the same exact thing all the way around, whether it be a door or a window, they all lay out the same. So you have these marks here that determine where your center is going to be. And these are all things listed on the architectural. Now before any of your plating goes down, you're going to snap lines on your slab, which you guys will see in our build series starting tomorrow. You would hook that corner there and go five foot nine. You'd give yourself a mark and go back three and a half. And that is for that interior two by four wall. So now you would butt that wall right there and pull five foot five over the next one. Go back three and a half to there. And that's that wall. From there, you keep doing that until you have all of your walls laid out. And that is how we will do it for each and every wall in this home. So what I'm going to do for you guys is actually wear a GoPro head mounted for this whole entire build. And you guys will be able to follow along as we build this house. And you can reference the plans, what we're talking about right now, to what we're building on this addition. Not only will you guys get to see it here on paper, but you'll actually get to see it on video as well. So now on every page, you're going to have something that looks like this. And this is going to tell you exactly what each of these walls mean. You're going to have a existing wall to remain a new 2x4 wall, new 2x6 wall, and then area not in the scope. So now as we come back over to here, you can see that this is going to be a new 2x6 wall here, new 2x6 wall all the way along the outside, interior 2x4 wall is new, and then over here all of these walls are nothing but white lines because all of this is existing. We have a floor plan general note section as well, which will tell you different things such as the all plumbing walls should be 2x6 minimum framing, provide R13 minimum insulation at plumbing walls, all of this is info that may be needed. As far as our framing goes, there's only a couple things we're actually going to take away from this. Now, like I explained to you guys, architectural tells you exactly where everything's going to be placed as far as the toilet goes, the sinks, showers, kitchen island, washer and dryer, so on and so forth. None of this has to do with framing, so we're going to go ahead and skip through this. If you guys have any interest, you guys can pause it and read it. Now, when we get to structural, you're going to notice that none of these numbers are on there. You have to go off the architectural floor plan to figure out where all of your other walls are going to be along with where your window and door openings are. We're going to go ahead and flip pages. Now we're on A2.2, the accessory dwelling unit floor plan. Now this is the upstairs floor plan here. Same exact thing goes here. We have the floor plan legend, general notes, plan sheet notes, and our plan keynotes. We're not going to be looking at these. We're going to check out this right here. Now, as you can see, it's the same thing as down below. We've got more windows in here. Center marks laid out on each one of them. Center marks laid out back here as well. All of these diamonds are for our window and door schedule. We have our door is number 202. Now this out here tells you that we have a deck 12 foot by 11 foot quarter per foot slope sloping that way. Now, since we covered layout and how we lay out our windows, our doors and all of our plates down below, we're going to talk about something else. You can see the three here, two, one, A, B, C. These are called grid lines. We have B runs all the way through, three runs all the way through here. Say you need info from either the architect or the structural engineer. You're going to email or get in touch with them with what they call an RFI, 
request for information. So say you needed info on these plans from the structural engineer or the architect. You don't want to email them and say, hey, in the bathroom by the sink closest to the wall, we have an issue. You have grid line B and grid line two there. You can explain exactly where you're talking about when you send in that request for information. They can get back to you on a response and ask you, hey, is everything all right with the corner of C and one? Right there. You can verify, yeah, everything's spot on. All of this is super easy to understand and the biggest problem with people being able to read plans is not many people have the opportunity to. Same thing as below, you guys have your kitchen laid out here, kitchen cabinetry here, looks like a little stove there, sink goes there, bathroom is in here, sink, toilet, tub, everything is laid out. The architect gives you info on all that and as you can see the reference points for everything. For your keynotes over to the side, none of this has to do with framing. Only thing we take from this is your grid lines, all of your layout marks here for marking center of your windows and your doors. That is it when it comes to framing. Now we're going to zip through this as well. This is first floor reflected ceiling plan. This has nothing to do with this. You have an L here for your lighting, a couple dollar signs and other crap for electricians. We don't need to know anything about that whatsoever. Therefore, we're going to keep on trucking. Just to where you guys can see it in case you're curious. We have electrical symbols here, ceiling plan sheet notes, mechanical notes, lighting notes. We don't do that. No disrespect to you guys though, have much love for all other trades. This is the roof plan here, architectural 2.5. This doesn't give us too much info either. It says here that our slope is one and 12, going that direction downward. Quarter inch to 12 for our deck going that way. We already knew that info though. Not much for us here. Holy moly. We're on to something that actually makes sense. Exterior elevations, A3.0. As you can see here, we have east elevations. You can see it from one side. North elevation, you can see it this way. And we've got these as well. This is where we're gonna stay and talk for a second. Now you've got a scale down here as well, quarter per foot. Every single page on a set of plans will have a scale. Here we're quarter per foot. Some places will be 3 16 some 3 8 Depends on who draws it up. So now there are a couple reasons we get elevations printed out. One, it's really nice to see what you're building. And two, you have info like this. New deck and second floor at nine foot. We can only assume that we've got an eight foot wall, one foot floor system, and then we go up from there. Obviously, Bottom of new roof, 17 foot. We are going to have some custom cut studs in there as we do have rake walls going from here over to there. Hoping I have some time to slow down and show you guys just how to build rake walls. We can look here and assume that this is all board and batten, but we can double check that as well later on. This will give you top of new roof is 20 foot two, bottom of new roof is 17 foot 10, top of existing roof is 11 foot, all sorts of info as far as how this place is supposed to come together. So now we're on building sections A4.0. Along with elevations, this will give you basic idea of your plate heights. 8 foot, 17 foot there. Along with that, you have info on all sorts of different things. Now along with your plate heights, it gives you a basic rundown of how things are supposed to look in here. You have different reference points for A8.0, number 10, 18, 2. You guys can flip to A8.1 and A8.0 and check those out. We will do that in just a second though. So on the same page, it'll give you info like your floor assembly. You have one layer of ISO step floor underlay right on top there. One sheathing per structural right there. 11 and 7 eighths TGI floor joist spacing per structural. You gotta reference your structural to figure out how they want those spaced out. It looks like we have R19 insulation between living space and garage a resilient channel, which will be like a hat channel, and then two layers of 5 8 gypsum board drywall underneath for a fire block in between the garage and the living space up above. Here we go, you guys. We're almost to the end of our architectural. We are on schedules. So we have a window schedule here. You can see here, tag, all these numbers here, and you have a diamond right up here. So any of these numbers that are inside of that diamond, you can reference. So when we do all of our plating and detailing, we have to reference this here to find out what size these windows are. Sometimes you'll have them laid out on the floor plan, other times you don't. In this case, we have to reference here and find out, okay, this is a 3640. From there, we can lay out. So we can keep as much knowledge in these videos as possible. 
I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we lay out for our windows and our doors. Say we have the little diamond with a 110 inside of it. That is a 3640. This is our width, that's our height. So when we go to layout, we'll find that center mark based off of the numbers that we saw on our architectural floor plan. We'll find our center mark and we're gonna take three foot six, which is 42 inches. Now three foot six is 42 inches. With window framing, you add three inches. With door framing, you add five. In this case, since we have a window, we're gonna add three inches to 42, making it a 45 inch opening. Once you have your center mark, you're gonna pull out 22 and a half inches. Give yourself a mark and a line there. X the right side. You'd pull over 22 and a half this way. Line X. So you have a king stud here, king stud there, 45 inch opening, and then once your trimmers go in, if you guys label those, you will have a 42 inch opening. Let's check out our door schedule real quick. So we have similar info, you have your rectangle there, any of those numbers you can reference here, your width, 2668, 2668. I'm gonna show you guys how we lay out our doors. Same thing goes for doors, you're gonna find your center mark and say you're working with a 2668. 26 is 30 inches. Now you add five inches when you do doors and the reason you add five inches instead of three like the windows is you have your three inches for trimmers on both sides and then you have two inches, one inch on both sides for your casing. So in this case, you would add 30 plus five inches, you'd end up with 35 and that's what your header is going to be. You'd come out 17 and a half, give yourself a mark and an X. Come out here, mark X. You have a 35 inch header that goes in there. Once you add your trimmer, your trimmer, that leaves you with 32 inches. One inch on both sides for your casing and then your door goes in between. So now you guys know exactly how we lay out our doors and our windows. In our door schedule, we have different types of doors, A, B, C, D, all the way out until F. This is actually a really important section here and I feel like a lot of people should watch this. You have your nine inch self-adhering, self-flashing membrane at bottom of opening. You leave the bottom unstuck. As you can see, leave bottom edge unattached for water resistant barrier installation to go underneath. Now this is done so many different ways, but the way that they're recommending it on this set of plans, once the window is installed, you're gonna go ahead and paper, but you wanna paper underneath that section there, but over to the window there. So the paper would be on top of all the flashing here, but underneath the flashing there. That way, in the case that water did get underneath, it would go out on top of the paper. Now, the best piece of advice I ever got told is think like water. Now we're on to one of the last pages for our architectural. We have details. Reference number six to A8.0, you will have your door threshold at grade. This will explain to you guys multiple different things throughout the build. Now those reference points are awesome to look at. Number 13 here, typical stair tread and riser. It'll give you info, 10 inch minimum tread depth, seven and three quarter inch max riser. Now things like number nine here, exterior wall at grade, will give you guys an idea of where things are supposed to be. As you can see, we have our two by six wall here. We have our plywood sheathing, refer to structural sheets here on top of the concrete and our siding goes on the outside there. This is our last architectural detail and that just didn't fit on the page before so they included it here. This tells you things about the handrail elevation and the roof to wall at addition. This will tell us our connection from existing into our new stuff. All stuff we should be looking at but in my opinion though the architectural is the easy stuff. The structural here is where the fun begins. So we are completely through with our architectural. You guys have a pretty good understanding of how to not only snap your lines on your slab, but lay out all of your plates, detail all of your plates. I showed you guys how we lay out our windows, how we lay out our doors. And you guys remember there's always a golden rule. Ask the person you're building for though. We do three inches for our windows, five inches for our doors. As I explained, the three inches is just for trimmer on both sides. And the five inches on the doors is for trimmer on both sides, one inch casing on both sides. I showed you guys the A8.0 and A8.1, which are nothing but details from the side view, the front view, showing you exactly how it's supposed to go together. As we saw, we have two by six fascia smooth out. We have a block with four two inch diameter holes, insect screen along the back. We know that that's going to be a vented block. And the biggest problem that I've found is a lot of people don't know how to read plans because they've never had the opportunity. My best advice to you, if you've never had the opportunity to sit down and look through a set of plans, ask the person you're working for. I have 
in my personal office, I have a set for a home we bid, I don't know, a couple months ago. Along with season two's houses sitting right here. I have like four sets of these plans. Guaranteed the builder you're working for has a set of plans you could take home. Now the set of plans you guys read and learn off of don't have to be the same set as the house you're building. You can take an old set and learn so much from it. At work, everything is so fast paced and it's no wonder that people aren't allowed to sit down and learn because it would honestly take forever. Having the ability to take home a set of plans, sit down and read through different details. And the next time you're at work and you have a question and you see a reference number, you can go to that page where your details are and reference that. You might be able to figure it out without asking somebody else. Now I hope you guys were able to take something from this video. If you did, I need feedback. Leave a big old thumbs up on this video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see structural. We can cover everything. We've got a lot more coffee spilt sheets to look through. Now structural is where it gets fun. You have all of your hold downs. You have all of your hardware. It tells you where you need to have posts above, tying into posts down below. All of your shear walls are specced out. Structural is going to be a good one. If you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments below. Leave a big old thumbs up on this video. I will see you guys in my next video. Bang on.